In this video, I'm going to show you how to interact with a database using Excel VBA and ADO. First, we'll have a quick overview of what ADO is, then we'll write code that will read from a database and write the results to a worksheet using a record set. Then we'll look at two vital parts of ADO, closing the connection correctly and using late binding. Make sure you download the code for this video from the description below. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. ADO stands for ActiveX Data Objects and has been around since the 1990s. It allows us to read from databases and from other data sources. The reason we use ADO is so that we have a common interface when we want to manipulate data from different sources. If we didn't have ADO, we would have to write specific code for every different data source. When we use ADO, the first thing we do is create a connection to our data source. We give ADO a connection string and this connects us to the database. Once we are connected to the data source, we can run one or more queries to retrieve data. Each query returns the data to a record set object. And once the data is in the record set, we can easily write it to the worksheet. This is the database that we're going to be using. And when we run our query, we're gonna read all this data back to our worksheet. So let's go ahead and get started on writing the code. The first thing we do when dealing with an access database is we must get the file name. So the file is in the current folder. So we use this workbook.path and then we use the file separator and then we use the file name. Now the file separator forward slash it's not compatible everywhere. So instead of using this, we use application path separator and VBA will substitute the correct one when it runs. When we connect to a data source, we need to provide a connection string. How do we know which one to use? We can go to the website connectionstrings.com, which has a large repository of connection strings for all different data sources. We click on access and you can see the different strings are provided. We're gonna use the standard one. We copy it and paste it to our code. Let's split it into three lines so we can see it clearly on the screen. We use the underscore to split the same code line over a number of screen lines. You can see where the file name is in the example connection string. We'll replace this with our database file name. Now that we have a connection string, we can use it to open our connection. We create an ADO connection object and then we pass the connection string to the open method. Anytime we're finished with a connection, we should always make sure that we close it. We put a breakpoint in the last line of the sub and run our code. If the code reaches this line without displaying any errors, then we are pretty sure that our connection has worked. Now we're going to write the code to retrieve data from the database and write it to our worksheet. You may be surprised how little code we need to do this. We declare RS as a new ADO record set we also declare a string to hold our query. This query uses the SQL language, which is used to query databases. We write select asterisk from foods. Foods is the name of the table and asterisk means bring back all the fields. This query will retrieve all the data from the food table. Now we use the open method of the record set. This takes a query and a connection as parameter, and this will bring back the data to the record set object. Once we have the data in the record set, it's very simple to write it to the worksheet. We use sheet result, so I'm going to use this width statement here to make our code more readable. The first thing we want to do is clear any existing data in the worksheet. We simply say dot cells dot clear contents. So this will clear the range. To write out the data, we get a starting range on the worksheet to write this data. Range has a very useful property called copy from record set and all we have to do is pass the record set. Let's open the worksheet and run the code. We run the code by clicking in this sub and pressing F5. You can see it brought us back all the data from the database and wrote it to the worksheet. Imagine we want to only retrieve the records where food type is beverage. To do this, we only need to change the query. All the other code remains the same. We go to our query and add a where clause. This will filter the data for us based on what is in the food type field. We run the code again, and you can see that it only returned records where the food type is beverages. Let's do one more query to show how powerful SQL is. This time we want to retrieve all the food types and their average calories. Instead of asterisks, we have food type and calories, and we want the average calories, so we use the AVG function. We use a group by clause to show the fields that we will be summing. Let's run the code, and you can see we got back the results we expected. You may have noticed that we haven't been bringing back the field header so far. Let's go ahead and write the code to do this now. The first thing we do is to declare the variable i as long because we're going to be reading through the field using a for loop. 
We say i equals 0 to record set fields count and minus 1. And this is because the list of fields is 0 based. So it starts at 0. We use range A1 and then we use offset. So offset is the count from the current range and we use it to move to whatever the current column is. To get the current field we use record set fields and we then use the name property of the current field to bring us back the name. Now at the bottom we're going to change the 1 to a 2 so our data starts at row 2. We run this code and you can see that it brought us back the headers of the fields as expected. If we're using the record set multiple times we don't need to pass it to connection every time we open it. We can simply write the code a slightly different way. So if you look at the parameters here, open actually takes query as source and it takes connection as active connection. So we can actually set these parameters of the record set before we open it. This is doing the same thing, but we're just setting it before we run the open. So we set source to query and active connection to connection. And then we just open it without any parameters. When we run the code, you see that it works exactly the same way. The difference is we don't have to keep setting the connection. Now, if you're looking at code on the internet with ADO, you might see some extra lines here, like setting the lock type. And often the lock type is set to read only, and then the cursor type is set to the default, which is open forward only. Now, these are the actual default values, so you don't need to use these two lines unless you're gonna change the values to something different. It's very important that we close our record sets and connections anytime we're finished, even if there is an error. So I'm going to show you the code that we need to do to deal with this. So first we do on error go to eh. So this means if there's an error, it's going to go to the place labeled eh. Now we put an exit sub before this so that we don't hit it if we don't have an error. I'm just going to have a message box error description here. And now I'm going to create a second section cleanup. So no matter what happens, we'll go to cleanup. If there's an error, we'll report the error and then go to cleanup. Otherwise, we just go straight to it. So in the cleanup, what we want to do is we want to close our record set. So we first of all check that record set is not already nodding. And if it's not already nodding, we need to check if it's open. Now we do this, the way we do it is slightly more complicated than maybe what you've seen. We use a bitwise operator. So we're basically saying if our state and 80 state open equals 80 state open. And the reason we do it this way is that there can be multiple states and we want to say if it's only state open. And so if this is the case, then we close it. And obviously we set the record set to be nodding. Now, when we're doing the connection, we do exactly the same code as this. The only difference is that we replace record set with our connection variable. So we can do a control H and this allows us to do a search and replace. So we search replace with connection, find the whole word only, and match the case. You can see that we've replaced it. Let's remove this code so that we can see what we're doing a bit better. Let's test out this code. Then you can see, we'll put in some breakpoints so we can see where the code stops. Now when we run it normally, it stops in cleanup, and we simply go through and close the record set. Same thing for our connection, it's open, so it just closes it. But what happens if there is an error? So let's change the code so that we've got an invalid file name for the database. And when we run the code now, it stops in the error handling section. So we display the error, and after the error gets displayed, we go to the cleanup section. But our record set isn't in a state of open, so we don't close it, we just set it to nothing. And the same thing with our connection. Our connection hasn't opened because the file name was invalid. Now don't worry if this code is a bit complicated or seems complicated. You can just copy it and use it in your own projects. The way we've used ADO in this video is called early binding. When our applications will be used on different computers, it is better to use late binding to avoid conflicts. First of all, let's rewrite this code slightly and then we will change it to use late binding. We can rewrite the dim statement for the connection to be a dim and a set line. The code runs the same, but using set gives us more flexibility with creation of objects. When we run this code, it runs exactly as the previous code. So now to convert this code to late binding, what we do is set the type as an object. Then we use create object and we put the object name in quotes. We do the same for the record set variable. Set it as an object and then we use create object. Now that we're doing this, we no longer need a library reference, so we can turn it off. We run the code now and you'll see we got an error. It doesn't recognize state open anymore, and this is because it's not part of the library. 
We can create our own enum like this. We go to the top and declare enum and then set AD state open to 1. We run the code now and it works just as it should. The difference is we're now using late binding and if we run on a different computer, we are much less likely to get conflicts. If you want to learn more about ADO and worksheets, then check out this video on the screen. If you like this video, then please hit the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then hit the subscribe button. See you on the next video.